Hey everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you how to create spiral text using custom brushes and patterns in Adobe Illustrator. Now I'm using the CC version, but this should work in any modern version of Illustrator. If you're using CorelDRAW, you can check out our video, How to Create Spiral Text in CorelDRAW, and I'll put a link in the description below. So let's open up Illustrator and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create our wedge shape to form the text. So we're going to draw a box and we'll make the size of that box 8 inches by 0.3 inches. Now let's get our direct select tool and we'll lasso this bottom right point. We'll arrow that up 6 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we'll grab the top point and arrow that down 6 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we have the wedge shape that we're looking for. Now let's give that a color and we'll take off the stroke and we'll just move that over here for a minute. Now we're going to create some text and this can be your business name, it can be your website, it can be anything that you want to use to create this effect with. So we're just going to use the name of our channel, Rhino X Nation. And we're just going to top that out about three or four times. Then we'll come over and we'll choose a font. We'll choose this college black font. And there we have our horizontal text. We're also gonna create some vertical text. So we'll come over to the text tool, choose the vertical top tool, and we're gonna to top out the same thing. Space in between. And since this is vertical, you can't top it out as many times because it's longer topping it out this way. After we get the text topped out, we're going to tighten up the spacing just a little bit here. Now we'll turn that sideways 90 degrees our vertical text and now I just want to create one more I'll just make a copy of this so now we're gonna make a copy of this a couple of copies of that now we'll click on the wedge shape the range bring to the front then we'll click on our text come over to object envelope distort make with top object now we have that text now we'll click our next one arrange bring to the front click on our vertical text object envelope make with top object. Now we have our horizontal text and our vertical text. And then this one, we're just going to leave that one the way it is. So we're going to open up our brushes palette here. We're going to drag this one over, drop that in. We want to click here and make an art brush. Click OK. When the options panel comes up, just give it a name. We'll call it Rhino X Nation H for horizontal one. We want to stretch to fit stroke length. And then we want to come here and change our method to tints and shades. So you'll be able to change the color of the graphic. Then click OK and it'll add it to your brushes palette. Now we'll take our vertical text and we'll drop that over. Create an art brush. OK. Then we'll call this Rhino X Nation V for vertical 1. Stretch to fit stroke length. Change the method to tints and shades. Click OK. And then this single one here. We're going to drag that over, drop that in. This time we're going to create a pattern brush. Click OK. Whoops, I forgot I have to convert it to outlines first, so we'll just make a copy of that. Come up here to text and we'll create outlines. Make this a little bit bigger. Now we can drag it over, drop it in. Pattern brush, OK. We'll name this one P1 for pattern brush 1. We're going to leave this on stretch to fit. We're going to change the method to tints and shades. And then we're going to click OK. There's a couple other settings in there we need to change, but I'll wait and show you when we apply it to the objects. So let's move all these up out of the way. OK, now we're going to create our spirals. We're going to click the spiral tool. We're going to come over here and click and drag and we'll start drawing our spiral. And there's a few keyboard commands I wanna tell you about that you can use when you're making your spirals. If you hold the command key while you're drawing this out, it'll change the amount of decay between the lines. If you want more decay or less decay, you can change it that way. So we're gonna leave ours about, about there. 
Now if you press the up arrow key, you'll add more segments. If you press the down arrow key, you'll take away segments. If you hold the option key down while you drag, that will add and delete segments. If you hold shift, it'll constrain it. And if you press the R key, you can reflect it. So instead of it going to the left, you can press the R key, switch it to the right. So whichever way you want it to face, you can change it that way. All right, we have our spiral, so let's give that a stroke so we can see it. Now we'll click on it, option, shift, drag, and make a copy. So these are the normal spirals you can draw in Illustrator. If you want to draw one where the lines are closer together, you can hold down the, the command key and adjust the decay, get it more even. Then you can press the up arrow and add more segments. until you get it as big as you want it. And again, if you hold the option key down, it'll automatically take away and add segments. But trying to draw a symmetrical uh, spiral like this is kind of hard to get it spread out where you can actually top on it. So I'm gonna show you a different way to make a symmetrical spiral. Okay, so instead of the spiral tool, we're gonna to grab the polar grid tool and we're gonna option click. We're gonna choose five inches by five inches and we're going to do 10 concentric dividers and zero radial dividers and by doing it this way it's just going to draw circles and not lines connecting the circles so if we did like five radial dividers and clicked ok it would draw these lines connecting the circles and that's not what we want we just want the circle so we'll just leave that at zero click ok now we have our circles. And in order to make this into a spiral, what we're gonna do is click on this. We're gonna ungroup it, click off, click back on, ungroup it again. Now they're all individual circles. Now we're gonna get our direct select tool. Click down here at the bottom and drag up just to there so we can get those middle points. Now all these middle points right here are selected and that's what we want. We don't want to select these side ones. We only want to select these. Now we can do command X and cut that bottom part off and get our direct select tool. Now we'll hit command F to paste that back where it was. Now we have the bottom half and we have the top half. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the bottom half and we're just going to drag this over. Hold down shift and drag it over until it snaps right there. Now we've made two spirals. Now we're going to join all these segments together. So we're going to click and hold down shift on every other one. So we can select all the pieces of the first spiral. So we'll click every other one, every other one, every other one to there. Now if we move it you'll see we've got that whole spiral selected. We'll put it back, object, path, and we're gonna join. So now when we click on that, it's all one, one path. This one is still in segments, so we're just gonna select that whole thing, come back up here to object, path, and join. Now they're both spirals. So now that we have our spirals done, we can add the text. First we'll click on this one, and we'll add the horizontal text. You can see it starts big, gets smaller as it goes down to the middle. We can change the stroke size to make that bigger. And we have our spiral text. We can click on the other one here. We'll choose our vertical text. You can see this text out here is wider and it gets smaller as it goes down. You can also change the stroke on that, make it bigger. So now we have text on a spiral there. Now let's apply the text to our symmetrical spiral here. This time we're gonna use the pattern that we created. We're gonna click on that. And you'll see that it just puts the text, just keeps repeating it over and over and over all the way to the center. On this one, we didn't use the wedge shaped text because this is so long and it would just stretch it way out of proportion. So in this case, we use a pattern so it just keeps repeating, repeating, repeating all the way to the middle. But now you'll notice that each instance 
of the logo is touching, like the N and the R is touching. Let me blow that up a little bit. You can see that it's touching. The N and the R is touching here and here and here. So that's not gonna really look good when we print it. We need to leave a little bit of space in between each one. So, so we'll leave that selected. We'll come over here, we'll click this little icon here, bring up the preferences for the brush. And this preference panel is only gonna affect this occurrence that we've already applied to the spiral. So what we can do is here in the spacing, we'll just tell it we wanna do like a 3% spacing, preview that, and probably a little bit more. Let's try four. Maybe five. Yeah, that looks good. So by applying that 5% spacing, and now it leaves a little gap in between each one, but that only affects this spiral. If we come over to this spiral and we apply it again, then you'll see that it's gonna, it's touching again. In order for it to not touch when we apply it to something new, what we need to do is double click on the pattern and we'll come up here and we'll tell it 5% and we'll tell it to apply to strokes. And then that way, the next time we use it, the next time we apply it, it automatically leaves a space in between there. And we don't have to manually go in and readjust it every time, unless you want to. So let me move this stuff off the page over here for a minute. And I wanna show you a couple other things you can do with this. We'll draw it a circle here, and we'll draw a polygon, and we'll draw it a square. Okay, so we have a few shapes here and we can apply these brushes to the shape. And again, we can adjust the stroke. And you'll see that right here, when it comes around, it's touching here. So with the selected, if we double click on the brush, you'll see there's nowhere to adjust to compensate for that space there. So really the only thing we can do is just make a copy of that. And we'll zoom here on this. We'll get our text tool and we're just gonna top a period and then we're just gonna place that here and just scoot that over a little bit so we have some space in between there. So we'll select that period, we'll come over here and we'll type 0.1 and now that period is so tiny you can't even see it. So now we need to select that period, come over here to type, create outlines, then we'll select the period and this text and we'll do object group then we'll drag that over to the brushes and we'll say art brush, okay. Then we'll just name this horizontal two, H2. We'll leave that the same. We'll change this to tints and shades, say okay. And we'll zoom back out here. Now we're gonna click on this and we're gonna click on that second one we just made there. And now you can see when it applies the text to the circle, it leaves a space there where we added that little period but if we zoom in there, it's so tiny that you're never gonna see that. And if you feel like that little dot's gonna become a problem, after you get this created, you can go over here to Object, Expand Appearance, ungroup that. You can just select that and delete it once you get your text the way you want it. And then we can apply it to different shapes. We can apply it to this shape, it leaves a little space. We can grab this little icon here and drag that in, kind of round off the edges. We can do it, apply that to a square. Same thing, we can grab this little icon, round the corners a little bit so it flows more even. And we can even use that pattern and apply that. That one flows a lot better around these kinds of shapes. I can just make a new circle there and apply that to that. And again, you can change the stroke make it bigger and the bigger you make it the less occurrences so now it's down to three occurrences Let's see if we make it a little bigger now it's two occurrences so you know you can still adjust the point size on these to make them bigger or smaller to suit your needs so once you get all your shapes made and you have them the way you want them you can select the object come up here to object expand appearance and that locks it in as a graphic so now you can't really adjust it anymore, it's just a graphic. This one here, we've already created a graphic out of that one. And then this one, with the selected object, expand appearance. Now these three are locked in as graphics. And now you can 
You use these like any other. You can select the image, come over here to the appearance panel, select the effects tab, come down here, you can add a drop shadow to it. You can hit click here, you can change the field color on it. You can click here, you can add a stroke to it. We could select this one and we could come over here and choose our gradient tool. We can select a gradient. We can change it to radial, have a radial gradient. We can change the gradient. We can choose another gradient, make that one radial. And again, we could come here to the effects, stylize, add a drop shadow, we could add a stroke to that, anything. You can use any of the effects on these like you would any other normal graphic. You can use any of these different filters on it. If you want to distort it, punk and bloat it, and you can do that. You can distort it however you want to distort it. But just like any other graphic, you can use any of the effects here to customize your graphics. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.